My topic today is work. We spent about a quarter of our lives at work, uh, whether we like it or not. In the beginning of our existence as a species, work was really uh, cut in corner with our lives. We had to work to live, and many of us maybe still do currently, but a lot of us now currently work to maybe put up food on the table, but as well as find fulfillment in our lives. So my um, experience with work is not so hard and heavy as my parents. They had obviously very different lives than myself and even my partner, Frank. Um, our parents were lucky enough to live in, in a generation where they didn't have to necessarily worry about hunger every moment. My, my parents did in the early parts of their years. But as they grew older, they still had to provide for us, for the children, um, by, by doing tasks that maybe necessarily weren't the things that they wanted to spend their lives on, but they toiled away anyway to be able to give us the opportunity to have lives that were worth living and weren't as harsh as theirs. And now, um, maybe some of us, uh, I know for sure myself, when I first entered the work ex experience, uh, is more along the lines of doing work in an office. Often work because we spent so much time of our lives in that experience is where we find a lot of conflict um, where we have to interact with people and learn to find that harmonious balance that Bill was talking about earlier. Um, so I had a very interesting experience at work this past week uh, which is bringing me to this topic but in general I find that I really enjoy my life. Um, my work is very pleasurable. Uh, I, I look forward to waking up in the morning and going to work. My projects are very exciting. I feel like I'm contributing positively to life. And I end up uh, using my brain a lot, working with a lot of geeks. In Seattle specifically, um, we have a lot of very talented young minds here that end up using their brains and their hands, in essence, just to type out those thoughts from the brains but not necessarily to be toiling away, such as my parents were in factories or in construction sites. And yet, being a girl surrounded by brainiacs and nerds, I still find that I am not necessarily uh, appreciated for my talents. It turns out that in Seattle, it's very common for women, um, especially for women in tech, to not be as fully appreciated at the end of the day in the paycheck. Uh, as some of the, our male colleagues. Um, we have one of the widest uh, wage gaps and gender gaps in the country. Um, part of it is because we have a lot of very bright young software engineers working for Amazon and Google and Microsoft versus the secretaries who are supporting them that maybe aren't making the six-figure salaries that they are. It's not to say that they don't necessarily have the capacity or the skills, they just have different positions and maybe different credentials. But I am an engineer. Uh, I deal with a lot of clients. I do the same type of work that my colleagues do, even though I don't have my professional association certificate yet. I will be receiving that in October, hopefully, after I take and pass my professional engineering exam. And as a result, you know, I've kind of been quiet about my experiences at work. I just toil ahead and do the right thing, put my nose to the grindstone, and uh, just hope that my efforts are being noticed and uh, appreciated. That said, you may be familiar with the phenomenon of Lean In. Sheryl Sandberg, who is the CFO or CEO of um, Facebook, famously is taking on this crusade of changing the work environment for women um, to allow us to be able to move up in the careers, to have our voices heard, to have more women in the boardroom, people like her who can reach the echelons of success um, and yet still remain a woman, a mother, a feminine figure. Um, to be honest, I haven't read her book, but it's inundated my cultural soup, as it were, so I've been able to glean some things from it to stand up for myself, to be more confident in meetings, and to be honest, I've never really had problems being a girl in the workplace or dealing with the boys. It's not really been my experience to have been uh, ostracized or put aside or put down. Um, part of it may be because of my upbringing and not being scared to speak up for myself or you know, being the, the loud mouth of sorts in the, in the room, um, I never really felt that I had to be meek or modest or having to, you know, 
make up for differences. And yet, when the time came for my performance review last year, I kind of took some of this to heart in terms of speaking up for myself and saying, you know, these are my accomplishments and I believe that I should be properly remunerated in my salary to um, reflect all of the great work that I've been doing. So around um, end of December, we did have our performance review and I made that known. Another interesting thing about my performance review is that um, I'm involved with my local association, the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers. And as a result, I am running the website for our chapter, um, and I get a lot of inquiries, you know, job board postings from other companies, since I am the funnel through which other announcements for the society get sent out to our local chapter. So I get to see a lot of jobs that are related to what I'm doing um, that are being offered up. Uh, also, I have been kind of surfing Craigslist to, to look for opportunities for um, Frank to see if that's some th opportunities that might pop up for him. And it happens to be in the same category in Craigslist that engineering and architecture are. So I'm, you know, constantly kind of seeing what's going on out there in terms of my career and my landscape. I happened to run across one job posting that was almost to the T exactly what I do in my job. And what's rare, if you are searching for jobs, you may have noticed this. In Craigslist postings, they have a, a section at the bottom where it tells you whether or not um, they have a salary range for that position. And usually, a lot of employers put DOE, depends on experience. This one particular posting that was exactly what I do in my job had a dollar number on it. It was a range. And it was a, a range that was quite a bit higher than what I'm currently making. So I thought that was interesting. I printed out that job posting and I brought it with me to my performance review. I had a couple other data points from some other colleagues that have similar professions or at least are uh, in the position to hire engineers at a college. And I presented those facts, those data points in my performance review. That said, I didn't ask for a number. I just said, you know, here's some figures that are being uh, offered for people like me in my position. My boss took it, kind of considered it, and then I did get a raise, but I was um, a little disappointed it wasn't quite what I expected. So that said, I just kind of took it and um, continuing to work. It's, I know that I have a goal ahead of me in October to be able to take this test, and I'm hoping that after I pass that, I'll then be able to leverage that position to be able to make more money. With that, though, I feel like, uh, you know, I wear a lot of hats in my company. Um, they got me first steal when I joined because I had a lot of really great experience to begin with and I was starting out at a very entry level position. Um, throughout my time at my company, I've always made it a point to voice that we have suboptimal systems. The work that we do is fantastic, but the way that we do the work, not always very efficient. We don't always have the best technology to accomplish it, the best processes to make the work happen. Um, but yet, we do it. Um, I do it. I, I spent a lot of time wearing, as I said, many hats and making sure that we always deliver quality products. But recently, one of the projects I've been working on is for the National Park Service. Uh, it's actually a really cool project. We're turning a hundred year old plus building into a modern office. Um, so we have to keep the bones, but we have to totally renovate it. It's really cool. Um, but the National Park Service has very specific standards that they need for their deliverables, for their specifically their CAD systems, the CAD files that we are giving to them. Obviously, for archival purposes, it's very useful for them to have very consistent standards. But they are different than our company standards, and I had to do a lot of adjusting to make them fit to this, the National Park Service standards. And as our deadline neared uh, about four weeks ago, um, it got a little more tricky to be able to get to those standards and do my job, which is to design the plumbing system for this building and to deliver all the deliverables and to do marketing and every other thing that I have to do throughout my day. And it turns out that as the deliverable was getting closer, 
there's so much left to do that I had no idea because my main job on this project was just to design the plumbing systems. But it turns out I also had to get all the specifications together. I had to get all the equipment cut sheets together. There were a lot of other things that had to be done and yet no one was assigned to them. So as my experience and my um, passion for having quality products, I was the one left with the flaming pile of dog poo, as one of my clients would put it, um, to finish out the project and get it done by the deadline. It turned out it was a very long day for me. I ended up having to work about 18 hours. I finally ended up delivering the project at three in the morning after much uh, hassle and, and decisions to cut corners just to get her done. To be honest, I'm not sure what happened, but the other day our client called up and said, well, I can't, there's not, no information on this plan for me to review. I was like, oh my gosh, what happened? Everything I looked through looked fine. I couldn't understand what happened. I still to this day don't understand what happened, but the fact remains that the client uh, wasn't happy. So the project manager who actually owned this project on Friday afternoon uh, in front of my main boss also said, you know, Carmen, I, I, I understand that you always want to meet a deadline, but sometimes maybe it's more important for the project to look right, for everything to be checked. If you turn it in at three in the morning, what does it matter? You should just turn it in at noon the next day. If it's correct, that's much better to be late than to miss your deadline. And of course I laughed in my head because this particular project manager on that deadline day, when I was up at three in the morning, he the next day had taken the day off. He's an 80% time person. Also, he has chosen for his uh, work-life balance to not have a cell phone. So there was no way for me to even communicate to him, to be able to call him up and say, you know what, you should check this project before you send it to the client. It's your project. I was the one left holding that flaming bag of poo. To add insult to injury, he kept saying on Friday afternoon, I'm not trying to be critical, I'm just telling you, your commitment to meeting deadlines sometimes is a little detrimental. That's not exactly how he said it, but this is how I took it. So maybe, you know, you should really check that product before it goes out. It's okay to be late as long as the product is good. And I completely agree, totally agree, but our systems are such that that was not even a possibility and more to the point because it is his project and he was not there. I felt that it was a little unfair to be put on the uh, pedestal there to be blamed for something that was a systemic failure as well as a personal failure for somebody whose project it is to be able to say, you know, you, you failed. I did. I agree. I did fail. But it wasn't just our my failure. It was a team effort and the team failed. So this weekend I've been spending a lot of time thinking about what I could do how much more can I put in? Um, and I've been reading in, in the lines of the, the Lean In book. Some of it has been kind of interesting for me to try to take in uh, that I have to change myself to be able to then be more professional to advance. But really, I don't think I did anything wrong in this instance. It's really more the culture of my workplace and the culture generally that we work in. And, and let me tell you, I work with some great guys, super progressive, they have daughters. They are not necessarily the sexist pigs that other women might have to encounter in their workplaces. And yet, there was this whole situation happening to me on Friday afternoon where I did my best and yet it still was not enough. And now I'm reading this book, which is fabulous. Um, I'm just starting into it. And in terms of finding that right balance, being the sovereign, having control of my emotions and my feelings and my work, and to hold on to the Tao, I think is a little more tricky when you're a girl working alongside boys and the one that has to in the end answer for your gender. So what I like about this book is that it was written by a, a mother and daughter team. So a very accomplished lawyer as well as her her daughter who's got a law degree as well and is a journalist. And it's based on interviews of 127 successful working women, um, more than half of them which are women of color and giving you insightful resources to uh, achieve more in your workplace. So going beyond the cookie cutter advice of books like Lean In, just you know, lean in and be more assertive and you'll get what you want. 
it's not necessarily always the best approach that's one size fits all, where some women are more aggressive or um, opinionated, such as myself. Uh, other women are maybe not, that's just not their style. Also importantly, I have made a life choice to not have children, and I don't see how that choice should necessarily have a negative impact on my life because my colleagues have kids, and of course, you know, it comes 5 o'clock and they have to leave to go pick up their kids. I get that, but why is that different than me wanting to go have happy hour with Frank? So trying to find this right balance, I think, is really interesting. And as I'm continuing to read through this book, what pops out at me is the, the insights that they're um, bringing out in terms of the workplace and people's relationship to it, both as women and as well as men. If you are a male and you work with female, I think it's very important for you to understand as well the endemic systemic um, sexism that exists in our culture and how we might be able to move away from that. The patterns that have come out of this book that I think I'm going to continue to process are um, prove it again. So there's four patterns. One of them is prove it again. The idea that you have to continuously just show yourself and to have to prove that you are more worthy than the men equally and as competent over and over again. So I feel that happens to me all the time at work. Number two is the tightrope. So having to behave like a lady, but then also having to be assertive and trying to find that right balance. Not be too masculine, but also not be too feminine. The third one, um, the maternal wall, being that when it comes time for some women to make decisions about their family life, that then they get ostracized at work. Or vice versa, if they have children and they are very driven, then it's like, you know, shouldn't you be at home with your kids? Why, why are you missing a ballet practice? And then finally, the tug of war of just navigating the path of that those traditional male and, and female roles and having access to your own um, femininity or your your basic being. So all of that, I'm you know, struggling to, to work through this, to be the lady, to be upstanding, to meet my deadlines, to be a, a good worker, to be a team player, and to do it in harmony. And it reminds me of uh, this really interesting quote. It's not really a quote, it was a cartoon that came out of it. You know, Fred Astaire, what an amazing dancer, right? Well, sure, he was great, but don't forget that Ginger Rogers did everything that he did, but backwards and in heels. I feel like that at work sometimes, and maybe some of the women that you work with are the same, where they're still accomplishing everything that you're doing, but they're also doing it in a very ladylike way. So with that, I'm going to end my presentation with my recipe of the week. Most ladies in, in relationships uh, end up being the ones that make dinner. So I say this week, treat your lady to a night out. If you live in Los Angeles, you may have seen these trucks driving around the city before. They're actually for a canned goods company. Um, but I kind of enjoy, uh, I like this idea. Enjoy life, eat out more often, go have dinner somewhere else tonight. Um, helps the economy, helps your lady friends to be able to take just a little bit of time for themselves and to feel appreciated. So I'm going to have Miss Peggy Lee play me out. I got a $20 gold fish, says there ain't nothing I can do. I can make a dress out of a feedback, and I can make a man out of you, cause I'm a Thanks, Derek. Back to you.